Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, new week of studies. This is um, studying on Daniel's last vision in the study 191, significant date in BC. But uh, anyway, before we begin, uh, can you join me in a word of prayer? A dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this new week and for the difficulties and blessings of the past week. We need your presence, Lord, in these studies. We need your wisdom and understanding as we seek to understand your will for us and your truths. We know, Lord, that there is many winds of doctrine that blow. And uh, we know that as individuals, we can come to know you and that um, we can be used by you uh, for your glory. We pray that uh, you can be with each person who studies these things and that you can help us uh, in in sharing this light to others. We ask that you can guide and direct this study. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so a couple of little things that, uh, I guess, loose threads, which might uh, give us a little bit different direction. So, um, than what I was going to do before. So I mentioned it before we started recording, but I'm going to look at it again. So we had addressed in, um, in a study a period of 69 years. Now, 69 solar years, if you just use the average solar year, is 25,201 point seven one one days is that correct around I get that right uh, did you say sixty nine solar years yeah so I go sixty nine it should so be two five two zero one oh one point seven one one yeah. so if I take sixty nine times three sixty five point two four two one eight nine so we get that many days. Right, you see that? Now, you could round it up to 25, 20, or, or 25,202 days. So Stephen had, had pointed out to me, because uh, we were addressing in some of our discussions, uh, the dates, the various dates given for the first day of the first month in 1844. Uh, and, and there is a date that's given April 17th, which... Uh, um, I can't remember who gives that date. Um, you know, I can look it up really quickly in my conversations with Stephen. But obviously, we know that's not the correct date because if that was the first day of the first month, um, then obviously October twenty second wouldn't be the tenth day of the seventh month. But uh, let's see if I can find it quickly here. And I don't see it. Yeah, so I don't know. He, he sends me lots of stuff, so I don't, I don't know where it is. Hmm. Anyway, so so anyway, he was discussing that, and then he mentioned uh, the battle. Well, he mentioned the shot, the shot heard round the world. I mean, I've heard the phrase of the shot heard round the world, but it's a phrase that refers to the opening shot of the battles of Lexington and Concord on April nineteenth, seventeen seventy five. So. He, he was noting that from that date to April 17th is 25,200 days, which, which means to April 19th, it's going to be 25,202 days, which is 69 years. Now, now when, when did, why did we start talking about the 69 years? It had to do with Jeff's birthday, right? His 69th birthday. Was yeah. That yesterday, it? that was one of the points that came up, I think. Yeah, but so that symbol, that symbol of the twenty five twenty, and and as you can see here with one seven one one, um, seventeen times eleven is one eighty seven, right? Um, so so those symbols uh, become important. But the fact that there's sixty nine years from April nineteenth seventeen seventy five, now this sparks the American Revolutionary War and led to the creation of the United States. So is it an important date? I would say so. 
Yeah. So so we have to say it's an important date and it's connected to April 19th. Now, what does that mean? So there it is. Uh, now, the other thing is we heard about uh, Concord. Uh, that is, uh, Kess was talking about about Lexington and Concord, I believe, in some of her studies. Now, that's because there is uh, Concord is uh, there was a camp meeting at Concord uh, that preceded the the camp meeting at um, Exeter. Are people familiar with that and what Tess was trying to do with that originally? I mean, that was a long time ago. Now, we know Joseph Bates talks about it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if it's Concord, Boston, Exeter. So it, it's going to be actually Boston, Concord, Exeter, right? Um, here, here is what uh, Joseph Bates says. So I'll show you this as well. Okay, so this is um, Joseph Bates talking in... Um, uh, second Advent, Waymarks, and High Heaps. He says, At midnight a cry was raised, The bridegroom is coming, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. We have already shown that the tarrying time for the bridegroom by the prophetic periods was six months, beginning the 19th of April down to the 22nd of October, 1844. The midnight of this dark, stupid time would be about about July 20th, he says. Now, it's actually July 21st, but he's saying about. Right? So we, we know now that it was it was on the Sunday service that Samuel Snow is going to give the true midnight cry in the tabernacle in Boston. And it was received by the virgins in a different light from what I, it ever was before. He says he'd been trying to make people believe it before, but without effect, because it was generally believed as we had been taught from 1840, that the midnight cry embraced the whole subject, um, even beginning back to the French Revolution. And some were old enough to believe it had begun in the day of the apostle. But now it began to move with ra rapid progress. God was giving the light by his spirit. I well remember some that I had conversed with who related the wonderful manner in which they were moved upon to examine this subject before they had heard it. At midnight, in the dead of the night of this tearing of the bridegroom, the cry was raised, which caused great agitation and excitement, looking with unparalleled interest at a definite time, the 10th of the seventh month. The camp meeting was held at Concord, New Hampshire, somewhere about the 1st of August. Here we afterwards learned the cry resounded throughout the, the camp. And on the 12th of August, another was held at Exeter, New Hampshire. On my way there, something like the following seemed to be continually forcing upon my mind. You're going to have new light here, something that will give a new impetus to the work. How many thousand living witnesses there still are scattered over the land that experience the manifestations of the Spirit's power in applying to their hearts the many scriptures, and especially the clear exposition of the parable of the ten virgins at that meeting. There was light given and received there, sure enough. And when that meeting closed, the granite hills of New Hampshire rang with the mighty cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. As the stages and railroad cars rolled away through the different states, cities and villages of New England, the rumbling of the cry was still distinctly heard, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, Christ is coming. So, so you can see that, that, uh, was this, was this done, was this, these camp meetings done in two different places? Well, Concord and Exeter. Yeah, yeah, they're two different places. But they weren't so, held on the same day. Nope. One's the 1st of August. The other is uh, the 12th of August that the camp meeting okay. starts. Okay. These are you know, roughly two weeks apart. So we know it's going to be on the 15th of August that, that Samuel Snow is going to give his presentations, the three presentations that James White talks about. Right. And he's also on... Uh, uh, on the 14th, on the evening of the 14th, he's going to uh, also speak. And that's when it's going to be decided he speaks the next day. It's in my paper on the, the Midnight Cry, August 15th, 1844. And and um, Loughborough gets these two things con confounded. So he actually takes what happens at uh, Boston and he places it at Exeter. 
but he places it in July. He puts Exeter in July, not in August, right? Because he's conflated the two different events. And so he doesn't, he thinks that it's during, uh, because it is during the service that, that, uh, uh, Samuel Snow is going to end up speaking and giving the midnight cry in Boston. But I don't believe Joseph Bates is the one speaking. So he, he gets these things confused, the timing of it and everything. So so because of that, Loughborough has this all confused. But the point is we have Concord here. Now, now Concord and Lexington. So when we have this shot heard around the world, I don't know, Dwight, if you're you got any information about this. So there's the opening shot of the battles of Lexington and Concord. So I don't quite understand that because they're not, they're, they're quite a ways from each other. So why is it a shot? I mean, if they're, um, do you understand that? Well, the point being that when the British had come to this area of New England, there was okay, that's, that's in Concord. Yeah. Right. Where's Lexington? Let's take a look. I would have to assume that they are fairly close to each other. I know that they there is some hills, small hills in that area. It's not Lexington, Kentucky. Oh no. A- no, no, no. We're talking Massachusetts. Okay. So Lexington. What's the abbreviation for Massachusetts? M A? MA. Okay. At this, at this time, there were 3,960 American combatants. There were 1,500 British. There were a total of 393 casualties, 93 on the American side and 300 on the British side. So about 20% of the British force was lost. The British had marched into Lexington and Concord intending to suppress the possibility of rebellion because they wanted to seize the weapons of the colonists. So this is also indicative of why the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution is so important because they knew directly that if their weapons were taken, that the British would have been able to secure a victory and the revolution would not have occurred. Okay. So. Yeah. So, um, and they're about uh, seven miles apart. Right. Now the colonists had quite an alarm system for that time and they had summoned local militia companies. I mean, the American force was more than double that of the British. So you had a a man by the name of John Parker, who was the commander for the American side, and the British had John Pitcairn. It's interesting that both their initials are the same, JP. Yeah. So here is Jeff Pippinger, JP, all over again. So the context out of this was that Thomas Gage had been appointed the royal governor of Massachusetts in 1774. He'd been tasked by the British Parliament with stamping out the rising unrest that was caused by the restrictive British policies. Here again, the American colonists were upset because they were being taxed without any kind of representation. They had no voice in the taxes. Mm -hmm. Gage inflamed the tensions between the colonies and the mother country and led to really harsh enforcement of British law. He drafted a series of laws intended to punish colonists for deeds of defiance, like the Boston Tea Party, and these were called the Coercive Acts. By April of 1775, he was facing the threat of outright rebellion. He'd hoped to prevent violence by ordering the seizure of weapons and powder being stored in Concord, Massachusetts, 20 miles northwest of Boston. So all of this in Massachusetts is fairly close together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that gives us, so this is, so the start of the American Revolutionary War, I guess that's just the 
April 19, 1775. That's the date that they give for that. It's it's like that's when it started. It, the shot heard is that officially the start of the American Revolutionary War? Then that is, is that seen happened? as being the start of the of the revolution. Yes. So we had made this note um, dealing with the ships, right? Jeff's 69th birthday. So I'm just going to make a note here that uh, 69 years is uh, 25 days, right? As a symbol, it's it's got that 25, 20, and 17 times 11, you know, so kind of idea. And that the shot heard around the world, April 19th, 1775, to April 19th, 1844, is many days, okay? So just be sure. So that becomes pretty significant as far as I can see that we have that 69 years because this ties us into the 70 week prophecy as a symbol, right? 69 relates to the 70th, to, to the 69 weeks. And that's going to give us to the first day of the first month, right? In 1844. And we already know there's 2300 months to the first day of the first month in 2030. We also know it's 186 years, so that means April 5th, 2030 begins the 187th year from April 19th, 1844, and that it's 187, 187 years and 20 prophetic months from April 19th, 1844 to April 5th, 2030. So, so this helps establish some of the things regarding the connection between the 2520 and all of these lines. I mean, there's just so many different connections there. Now, what about just the idea that the American Revolutionary War begins there on April 19th? What What is the, the symbol there? Because remember, we have Concord, right? And, and so Concord has to do with uh, the midnight cry message, just like Boston and Exeter do. Exeter's Exeter does. Though, you know, we've never really, other than tests, really addressed this Concord camp meeting. Okay. So now they, they regularly had some meetings at Concord at different times. Yeah. So even when they talk about the great tent, they, the first time they had this tent, I believe it was pitched at Concord. And, and that's going to be in, in July of 1842, I believe if I remember correctly, but uh, I'd have to read more on it. But I, I believe that's when it when it occurred. So it's going to be the first time that it's pitched. So so what does this symbolize then? This, this Lexington and Concord, the start of the American Revolutionary War, and how does it tie to uh, the Midnight Cry? I was going to ask, need we note that Bates is talking about Concord, New Hampshire, and we're 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 just talking about Concord uh, uh, in 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 Massachusetts. Does it matter if it's the same oh, name in oh. two different states? Yeah, it, it's just the name, right? Because they're two different places. Okay. Got Concord, New Hampshire, and Concord, Massachusetts. So it's just a symbol, right? We're, it, yeah, it's not the same place because New Hampshire is not Massachusetts, right? <clears throat> But, but we have this name as a symbol. So so what does that mean? Would we look at this as symbolizing the first and the second angel's message? Okay, so you got Concord, Boston, Exeter, or, or are you taking Lexington and Concord as the first? I'm, and I'm looking at, at Lexington and Concord as the first and second angel's message. If we're going to look at this in the Millerite time, it, the the line that you just promoted would possibly would possibly still be in that okay yeah so it's definitely in 1842 that the tent is first pitched at concord right New Hampshire, not concord massachusetts in the end of july of 1842 so either july 26th or 27th or i guess it's the 26th okay so that's all i can okay. find about so, uh, Brother Theodore, did you notice that I got an article here that says that the total loss were 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 British's 
was 273, an American 95, the okay. Battle of Lexington and Concord. So 273 British. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but anyway. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Okay, so um, it's just we have these 69. So we have these 69. We connect these symbols, Concord, to April 19th because of the date. And it's 69 years, and it gives us the 2520 symbolism and the July 18, 2020 symbolism. And it ties to the 2300 years or 2300 months that go to April 5th, 2030. And, and of course, the 187 prophetic years in 20 months and the 186th or the 187th solar year that begins April 5th, 2030. I'm not, I'm not sure what else to do with it. It just gives us more significance regarding the 69 years at this point. So that Jeff's 69th birthday, which we already understand is a symbol of the, the 69 weeks. And it also connects to June 9th as a symbol. Six month, ninth day in 2018. But it's, yeah, so it just, it just ties more of that together. So, and that, and that comes from the word ships, the H591, where we count 591 days from March 27th, 2019 to November 7th, 2020. Okay. So that was just uh, part of our, our diagram that we had here. So, for the reason we connected it to that date just was because the March 19th date is the center of that 329 days from October 13th to September 7th. And that's going to September 7th going to be marked with uh, H6571, which is um, uh, horsemen, right? And uh, And then we have the chariots marked with 7393. Um, by 7933 days, switching those two center numbers. And then we had um, other dates connecting, right? So I'm not going to go back into that. And then the, you know, the start of the Levitical chiasm and all the different symbols there that pull everything together. So the 69th birthday just becomes sig significant in that sense. November 7th, 2020. Okay. So that's just a, a loose, a loose thread that we, we look at. So it wasn't something I was really planning to look at except because of Stephen's comment on that he made to me on WhatsApp regarding that that shot heard around the world. Now it, it does mark, you know, if you count, obviously it can mark to bring you to April 17th, which is a date. And I, I'm not sure if it's James White who gives that date for the first day of the first month. Um, and I, and I would assume that they would count it at sunset. So beginning, uh, 2018, but it's just when the equinox is, or not the equinox, the astronomical new moon is, is on April 17th. So that's why he may give that date. That's the new moon. So any, any questions about any of that? Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure we've, we've pretty much covered verse 41. The only other thing that we were addressing Oh, I forgot about this. So we had talked about the April 6, 2024 date. And, and that's going to be resulting from, I don't know. Yeah. So 4124 on the Mayan calendar. If we count 4124 days from 130000, it brings us to April 6, 2024. Now, we had some discussion about what was presented on April 6, 2024 by Jeff. So Jeff is, uh, he does a presentation on April 6, 2024. Uh, you can find it on the little remnant YouTube page. In the April 13th, 2024, Jeff is going to, that's the one where he's going to talk about Theodore's antics and stuff like that. And that he never has not been listening to any of my presentations. That he didn't listen to me even before July 18th. And that was based upon rumors and gossip that he heard that he never tried to um, confirm, which would be a mistake. But it's a mistake he made. But as far as the April 6th, 2024, I can't find anything there in the recording where he says that, you know, we shouldn't have any 
that like we should be blocking people. And I can't find that in the 2013 or not 2013, April 13 one either. So, so I'm not really certain what the significance of the April 6th, 2024 date is, but we, we have it there. So the 4,124 days from the Mayan date. And any thoughts on that? The only thing I can say is that on April 6th, 2024, the title of my presentation and the number of that presentation is presentation number 13. And the topic is the Mayan calendar. So I think I would probably just connect it to that presentation rather than Jeff's because I don't have anything specific. So how does that look? Does that make sense? Okay, March 16th was the mutant block statements, I believe. Okay. So, so this makes sense if we're going to count from the 13th back to there, 4,124 days, and it's going to bring you to my presentation on the Mayan calendar on April 6, 2024. That makes sense, right? Correct. Okay. So there. So we tied up that little thread or loose end. Okay. Now we, so I think we have verse 41 done. And we, we can see that verse 41 is addressing these, these different dates. November 9th, 2019, July 18, 2020, and December 25th, 2021 are all represented in the various symbols. So, you know, I'm going to have to draw a diagram of that, but I won't do that right now. We'll look at these other verses. Now, one of the things we said is that Papal Rome is going to, in, in verse 41, it's going to represent FFA in some ways, right? Whether that's, that's FFA controlled by Jeff or by others. But now when we look at uh, verse 42 and 43, it says, he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries. Now, in the historic application, this is Papal Rome uh, coming against the UN and the land of Egypt, another symbol for the world, shall not escape. And that is, it shall submit to Sunday legislation. But, but he, Papal Rome, shall have power over the treasures of gold, of silver, and over the all the precious things, that spiritual and material wealth of Egypt, the world, and the Libyans, the poor, and the Ethiopians, the rich, shall be at his steps. And that means uh, be in companionship. So that's what we have for verse 42 and verse 43. Now, in trying to place this in a present truth application, this one is not as straightforward at this point. So, we, we know that this has to do with the Sunday law. And if verse 42 follows verse 41, then this would have to be events after December 25th, 2021. Now we know that it's talking about the Sunday law, but we say that the Sunday law is being typified by the pandemic. But in this case, um, this is something else within this movement. Now we can say that the countries, because of the number 776, which represents the period from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 1991, that typifies uh, in our history. So it's, it's going to typify in our history, November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. So it represents the message given at that time. Now, um, if we add stretch forth his hand, that's going to give us 10,998. Now that's um, going to be a period, if we had it as a period of time, it's 30 years and 40 days. So I don't know where we would place that. Any ideas of what, I mean, if we counted from November 9th, 1989, it's going to bring us to December 20th, 2019. If we counted from December 25th, 1991. It's going to bring us to February 3rd, 2022, right? So it brings us 40 days past <clears throat> December 25th, 2021, which is February 3rd. Doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me. 
It's three days short of my birthday, but that still doesn't mean too much. It's going to be, um, yeah. I'm just trying to see how that relates to other dates. So anyway, we have that 30 years and 40 days, what, whatever that means, if we add those together. 7971 plus 3027, 10,998. And then we have that symbol. So he's going to stretch forth his hands upon the countries. Any thoughts on that? So, we're, you know, we, it gives us February 3rd if we count from the end of the first 777 inclusive days, 30 years later, 30 plus 40. Any thoughts on that? Now, one thing um, we could do, or one thing that does work. So if I go to this March 27th, date. So this is March 27, 2019. That's that center date, which we counted the ships to Jeff's 69th birthday. If we count back from this, an inclusive count, that is, uh, let me see if this works. 10,997, I have to count in order to, to do that backwards. That's going to bring me to February 15th. 1989. And what's February 15th, 1989? The end of the Soviet-Afghan. Yeah, so the end of the Soviet-Afghan war. So if we just do an inclusive count from the end of the Soviet-Afghan war of 10,998 days, that he shall stretch forth his hand, right? That That is going to give us that March 27th, 2019 date, that center date of the 329 days between um, October 13th, 2018 and September 7th, 2019. So if that's the case, if that if that's correct to apply that stretching forth his hand there, what what does that signify? What, what is that? What would that symbol tell us by connecting it to that date? So it's it's not that you're, we're just taking dates and connecting them. They have to have meaning. So the Soviet-Afghan war has its importance. We've been noting it many times, uh, the date. And this is the end of it. So we're going to count from the end of the Soviet-Afghan war. Uh, it says he shall stretch forth his hand upon the countries. He, uh, historically, is papal Rome, Right. But here we're, we're, we're paralleling Papal Rome with the FFA. And so can we just, can we say it's significant because it's the end of the Soviet Afghan war? And for some reason this isn't sharing. Now why? There we go. So that period of time there, 7971. And notice hand is the date, March 27th. So that would be even more evidence that we should mark that span of time, but he's going to stretch forth his hand, right? It's going to give us March 27th, 2019. And, and this one in the present truth application is referring to FFA or Jeff. Anybody have thoughts what it means? Because, because I think it's pretty valid, especially because hand represents March 27th. So it's going to give us that March 27th, 2019, which we have already connected to Jeff through the ships, right, to his 69th birthday. Well, Soviet-Afghan war was it was a proxy war between the U.S. and Russia. And yeah. you have Islam involved. You have the King of the South involved. So is, it involved. Just a symbol. so is it just a symbol of the message of FFA connected to those things? Ah, it's got to be in there somewhere. I just <laughs> brain's not so, working well today. Yeah, so it could just say the one that's stretching forth his hand in, in the present truth application, because we're not, we're not taking these and applying it to the historical application, right? We already have the historical application, but we take these things and we connect them. Now, uh, this word, a shalak, uh, means to send, send away, let go, stretch out, right? It can mean let loose, to be sent, to send off, to shoot forth, uh, to be sent off, to be put away, divorced, be impelled, 
to send, right? And there's these different forms of the word. Um, when we look at this one in Hebrew, so it just says, and he, sh he shall send, right? Or he shall stretch forth, depending on, on how you want to trans. So he shall, obviously, because it's connected with hand, that, that that's why it's going to be stretching out his hand. So he's going to send out his hand is really what it's saying, literally. And he's going to send it uh, upon or in the countries, right? So you can see Aretz, um, Aretzot, that's just the, the plural for countries. Countries are feminine. And uh, it's got a bet at the beginning. So that just means in or upon, right? So he shall uh, send out his hand upon uh, the countries, right? Well, which is the word lands, right? And then, and then it says also uh, the land of Egypt um, and the land of Egypt. Again, you're going to have seven, seven, six, and Mitzrayim is Hebrew for Egyptian, right? Egypt. So the Egyptians, the Mitzrayim. And not, and then this one here, uh, haya, to become delivered or escaped, right? That is, they shall not escape. Okay. So, so the land of Egypt shall not escape. It shall not be escaped, really, literally. So he's going to send his hand upon the countries and the country of the Mitzrayim or Egypt shall not be escaped. That's That would be fairly literal. What does Young's look like? He sendeth forth his hand upon the lands, and the land of Egypt is not for an escape, he has, in Young's literal translation. <clears throat> okay. So, so we know the historical application, that this is going to be representing uh, the Sunday law. The world is going to be captured by the Sunday law. That's the land of Egypt, right? Uh, the countries there we apply to the Soviet Union. So it's going to be, um, or the UN, right? In this case, you know, it's, it's going to be the Soviet Union, then the UN, the land of Egypt being the world. <clears throat> okay. Now, if we, so we can connect that in the present truth application. I'm just going to figure out how to do this. So we're going to say FFA. That's the present truth. So stretch forth his hand. We're going to say that's um, H7971 plus H3027 equals 10,998 inclusive days from... February 15th, 1989 to March 27th, 2019. So you can see that's going to be a period of uh, 30 years and 42 days, or 40 days. Yes, I'm not sharing. Sorry about that. I often do that wrong. So I put that in there. <clears throat> you can see it's the bottom line in there. February 15th, 1989 to March 27th, 2019, 30 years and 40 days. So, um, and, you know, I'll make that clear in putting up the paper what the significance of March 27th, 2019 is, but that's going to connect to Jeff's 69th birthday with uh, 591, H591. <clears throat> okay. Um and so we, we can see that this does help our um, present truth application. Now, so if he's going to stretch forth his hand upon the countries, now the countries here is, is going to represent. So I think what we would do here, uh, I think we should actually have this as the USSR, not and then this one would be the UN. I think that makes more sense in the historical application. So it's just tying what happens with the USSR, with the fall of the USSR, at the end of that 776 days, right? 
And then when we have um, a present truth application, then the 776 days is going to represent the message of the beginning of this movement. Can we say that? That that's what the stretching forth of his hand is symbolizing an attack upon uh, the message of the beginning of this movement by FFA. We have the 30 and 40 in Judges 12, 14. Angela's just noting in Judges 12, 14. And they had 40 sons and 30 nephews that rode on three score and 10 ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. So that's going to be Abdon. Now, we may not remember all the, the applications of these, um, but uh, it's after Jephthah. So these are going to be the ones before Samson. And Abdon is going to represent this uh, period from December 6, 2020 to December 25, 2022. 749 days, 107 times 7. And it's going to mark December 25th, 2022, the first day of the 10th month. So so I, I think it, it you know definitely could relate back to that. But now we have to take, anyway, so we're going to take this, uh, we're saying that this 776 days is going to represent an attack upon the message of the beginning of this movement. Now, so we're going to have uh, the land of Egypt. So first off, if we take Egypt, Mitzvah 4714, and we put it into years, it's a period of 12 years, almost 13 years. Uh, 12 years and 331 days. So it's just uh, basically a little over a month less um, then 13 years. If we add it to the land, if we add that to it, 776, so the land of Egypt is a unit, uh, it gives us a period of 183 prophetic months, which is 5,490 days. And it's going to be roughly 15 years. So 15 years and 11 days. So where could we put 15 years and 11 days in connection with this? Any thoughts? I mean, it can bring us to, to 2016. I mean, if we go from September 11th, it brings us to September 22nd, 2016. I don't know of any significance there. Obviously, if it brought us to September 22nd, 2017, I could give some significance, but if I just count from September 11th, I count the Mitzvah uh, 4714, that's going to bring me to August 8th, 2014. Not that I, anything that I think is significant, but I know to be significant. Okay, so, okay. so I, I can't find anything there right at the moment that addresses that period of time. Now we have Shall Not Escape, 1961 and 6413 shall not escape submit to Sunday legislation is the historical application. So if we take uh, this phrase shall not escape 1961 6413 and we add it together we get 83 um 8374 and if we counted that from September 11th, 2001, it brings us to August 15th, 2024. And August 15th in 2024 is the 10th day of the fifth month. That's the date for the symbol for the destruction of Jerusalem. Is that significant? Can we mark that as a symbolic date in the future, August 15th? All right. I think we can because it's also the midnight fly. Yeah. Yeah. And since they have this one. Okay. So we have the symbol of the midnight cry. So, so how do and, and the symbol for the destruction of Jerusalem. So we have these two symbols there. And and we're saying that, that there is this attack by FFA 
upon the message at the beginning of this movement. And we still have to figure out what the land of Egypt represents. But the land of Egypt shall not escape. That is, they're going to submit to the Sunday legislation in historical application. Obviously, it's not referring to Sunday legislation, but it refers to something in this movement. And so the land of Egypt has to represent something in this movement, in this case. Historically, it's the UN, right? Historic application. Uh, but in our history, it'd have to represent some aspect of this movement. And they're not going to escape. And so the date that we get... All about the bondage of worldliness. Okay, so it's just that... People with fear the, it, you know. Yeah, so with this attack upon the foundation of this message, the beginning of this message, it's going to lead to a warning being rejected by the people in the movement, just symbolically as the 10th day of the fifth month and the midnight cry. Well, it's really hard to convey anything new to people that are convinced that they're all right. When Ellen White says, if we think that we're all wrong. Yes. So it's the worst condition to be in, to think you're all right when you're all wrong. And, and every one of us has to take that to heart. We have to recognize that if we are deceived and and we don't know it, that's a pretty bad situation to be in. Now, now we believe, and I think the evidence is that we are looking to be corrected and that there isn't at least, you know, I don't think this is about uh, pride or anything like that. This, this whole, all of these studies and what we're doing, it seems to me the fruit of it and, and, and what we see happening in other places uh, really easily demonstrates what the truth is. So it's in a hard position to be in. I mean, if we're taking this as relating to this movement, we're just showing that what this attack that's happening now in this movement is really an attack upon the truth. And that unless a person can escape, and, and we know that the ones that only ones that do escape are Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon, right? That is those that accept the message of the 777 days from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. So it represents this message that we were given that has now been rejected, right? So that message has been rejected. And so we're saying that stretching forth his hand upon the countries is the attack upon the message of the beginning of this movement. And, and that is, if you attacked the end, if you say that the 777 days are irrele irrelevant, then, then you've attacked the beginning of the message, right? Now, so, you know, maybe the land of Egypt uh, represents the message at the end, right? So we have, we have the countries or the land, the 776 at the beginning, right? That's what's attacked. But uh, the land of Egypt here represents uh, an attack upon the message of the 777 days, 30 years later, right? And so this shall not escape, right? We have this, let me put this in here. Now we're just saying, so this is going to, um, you know, it's going to give us this period of time. And so I don't know how to do this. What's the best way to, seven, three, eight, three, seven, four days. So I'll do it here, H, 1961, plus, H6413, or 64, we have 6413 equals 8374 days from, let's say from September 11th. Okay, so to August 15th, 2024, which is the 10th day of the fifth month. So that becomes a symbol 
of a rejection of the midnight cry message, of the message of the 10th day of the fifth month, which also symbolizes July 18th, 2020. So if we look at this, uh, what's not going to escape is not about submitting to Sunday legislation per se in this present truth applications. It's about a message. So it's basically a rejection of the midnight cry on July 18th. Okay. So that would be the present truth application. But he's going to have power over the treasures of gold, silver, and over all the precious strings, things. So uh, the sp- spiritual and material wealth, obviously, in this history, it's going to be uh, the control of the movement. So um, FFA is going to end up with the control of mines and finances of the movement. Does that make sense to people? That uh, what we're going to see is FFA is going to be getting all the money and also have the following of the people of this movement. So what we would have left is to understand what uh, the Libyans and the Ethiopians represent. Now we have the poor and the rich in the historic application. What would that represent, right? Because um, because they shall be at his steps, which means in his companionship, right? So they're going to be following him. So what do the rich, the poor, and the rich represent in this context regarding the message? So that's the Libyans and the Ethiopians. So if I just take it, you know, the poor as it's a period of just over 10 and a half years, 10 years and 211 days as a period of time. And the Ethiopians is a bit less. It's obviously nine years and something. Uh, three, five, six, nine divided by 365.25. Nine years and 281 days together. Three, eight, four, plus three, five. It's obviously going to be over 20 years, about a third. Yeah. 20 years, 128 days. If we count it from September 11th, it brings us to January 7th, 17th, 2022. I don't know of any particular significance to that. So there's some place that it may fit, but right now we don't have enough time to figure that out. So, um, but it says the rich and the poor shall be at his steps. 4703. And 4703 is close to one of the other numbers we had before. So it's 12 years and 0.87, which is all the numbers of July 18, 2020, and, and then a longer decimal after that. So it's 12 years and 320 days. As an inclusive count from September 11th, 2001, it brings us to July 27th, 2014. Whether that's significant or not, if we do just a regular cardinal count, it'd be July 28th, which is July 15th, Julian, which is July 27th, Gregorian in 1840. It's also the first day of the fifth month, July 28th. So that's the poor and the rich shall be in his steps. So we end up with these significant dates as symbols, right? Not particularly as events. So there are lots of interesting things that we find as we put these together. Okay. Any, any final thoughts before we close with prayer? So, so I think we're getting somewhere with these. These seem to make sense. There's just some symbols we have to. Uh, address we didn't address having power 4910 treasures 4362 gold 2091 silver 3701 so we didn't address that or precious things 2530 we didn't address those so we still have some more analysis to 
But this is making sense to people, I hope. Um, you know, for people watching, it can seem a little bit odd, I assume, uh, if they're not familiar with these things. But um, it's just using these symbols of the Hebrew numbers to address spans of time that relate to events or symbols within our movement. It's not really how we get the primary application. It just affirms it. Okay, so no final thoughts? Well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study and um, for each person who is looking for truth. We just pray for your spirit's presence throughout this day. Help us to obey your voice, uh, to walk in your ways, and to reveal your character to others. Thank you for hearing our prayer and bring us together again. According to thy will, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.